All right, thanks for tuning in. So today is gonna to be the very first video in what I hope is a successful build series. Um, we're gonna be tackling a pretty big project and uh, something that I've wanted for a while and I uh, was looking at buying kind of a commercially available one, but I just decided to take the plunge and we're gonna go ahead and build it ourselves. So what I'm talking about is we're gonna build ourselves a DIY GFC camper. So I wanted to bring you guys along on this journey and uh, hopefully it'll inspire you guys to, you know, maybe tackle something like this on your own. I, it's certainly gonna be a huge undertaking. I don't really, think I fully know what I'm getting myself into, but I'm just going to dive into it. I have just kind of basic, you know, mechanical and working experience as far as wood and metal goes. So we're going to have to build some skills along the way and uh, learn some new things, but I think we'll be able to get it done. Um, it seems daunting, but I think you just have to dive in. So I wanted this build series to kind of be something you guys can watch if you're thinking of doing it, at least bring you along um, so you can see kind of my process and how long things have uh, or will take me and uh, perhaps help you along if you end up tackling this on your own. But either way, it's going to be a good time. So we're kind of just going to start with the first part. I'm going to start with the space frame. Um, so I went ahead and got materials uh, to start building that out. The first area that we're starting is we're going to start with uh, building the jig for the space frame. So I got what I believe is all the wood that I need to do that. I already went ahead and picked up my metal. We'll see if I get that far this weekend. Um, I might have time to get the jig together and start welding the space frame, but that might be pretty ambitious and it might have to wait. So yeah, we're going to go ahead and start measuring things out. Um, I did buy the plans um, from Ripcord off of his site. You'll see a link in the description for that. I'm going to loosely base them off of that. Um, they're going to be modified just a smidge to fit the first gen Tacoma a little bit better. But uh, other than that, they should be pretty close. So yeah, we're going to go ahead and uh, get cutting. All right, so it's officially day two. Um, got a fair distance on the jig last night. Uh, this morning though, I placed my orders for all of the extrusion from 8020 and, uh, some other hardware. That's probably the most expensive piece so far. It was probably around $900 for, um, the extrusion and some hinges and seals and, uh, some fasteners and such. So that should be some motivation to get this going. So today I think I'm gonna try and finish up um, the rest of the jig and maybe we'll get the top hoop uh, to the, the space frame welded today, we'll see. I still need to make sure uh, my smiter saw down here with the abrasive blade will cut the steel that I'm gonna be working with and uh, we're gonna cut up some scrap pipe and do some more practice welds, um, get the machine set up for this thickness of tube, and then we'll make sure all the dimensions on the jig are what they should be, and we'll probably get started on the metal side of things, so we'll see how far we get today. Okay, so it's been a little bit since I gave an update, so we'll just walk you through where I'm at right now and then what I'm working on. So we have basically the whole jig built. Um, these pieces aren't positioned yet for the fine measurement of where the frame will go, uh, but we just got these two pieces of metal cut for the top and we're gonna go ahead and weld up the top um, hoop as that one's pretty easy, it's just 76 by or 76 long by 50 wide. Um, so that'll be pretty easy to get done. And so we're gonna work on that. And then we'll probably move to the bottom portion of the build. So I placed the order for the extrusions yesterday and a lot of the hardware there. So that should hopefully be coming pretty soon. 
that's exciting. So kind of trying to get the space frame all welded up so we can get working on the tent portion. Uh, I still have yet to order the aluminum panel. I think I'm going to do a fold up floor version of the tent instead of a fixed uh, a fixed position um, sleeping platform. That way there's more space on the inside when somebody's not sleeping. So that's uh, something new and we're gonna have to see how that one works out, but that's what we're gonna attempt. All right, we've made a bit of progress on the space frame. So I'll go ahead and show you where we're at right now. So we got the rest of the space frame all put into place and then measured everything and put these blocks in so we can keep the top the in the correct position in relation to the bottom. So the bottom's all clamped in and we just got these pieces cut. So I went ahead and used a Fusion 360 to sort out the angles on these pieces and the length to make sure that everything is right all the way around um, and that the jig's not influencing any of the decisions we're making there. So we're gonna go ahead, get those tacked up. And then the next step will be getting the canopy and rooftop tent off the truck. I think we're gonna put some pulleys in the ceiling and hoist the tent off and leave it there. And then we'll set the canopy aside and then stick the space frame on the truck, make sure it fits how we want it to fit and looks good before we fully weld it. Okay, super exciting update. We have the space frame roughly tacked and on the truck right now for fitment. And I have to say it looks great and fit is about spot on. So I'm super stoked on that. Um, what we're gonna do is go ahead and take it off and we're gonna go ahead and finish welding it up completely before we start moving on to some next pieces of the space frame. So fitment is about spot on in terms of how it meets up with the bed. So I went 57 inches and a quarter wide from inside rail to inside rail. And then we followed the standard plans for the rest of it, which is 76 long. Um, and then I, I had to figure out these the dimensions of these pieces because this bottom hoop is smaller than what the plans call for. Um, it's not going to stick out this far. I just have it spaced off of the front here um, a little bit because I was trying to see how much I needed to have a gap for um, the bulkhead panel. But what I think I'm going to do is we're going to snug this up to the cab and I'm going to do the bulkhead on the inside. That way we don't have to worry about interference between the window and it. So yeah, I think it looks pretty good. Quick update. We got the truck bed lined. I did a Herculiner roll on for the back. Turned out pretty dang good, I must say so. Pretty impressed with that. Um, but I was just testing the frame. We got these brackets. I'm pretty sure this is how we're gonna mount um the topper to the truck so i have four um i might order two more so we'll have six across the side we'll have to see um but that should work once i get them all on there that should be pretty sturdy i'm going to probably put four on right now and just test and see how sturdy that is uh but yeah that's the plan today we're going to start working on the floor and uh getting that all fabbed up okay time for an update it is freezing cold outside right now it's uh about 30 degrees maybe a little bit colder but uh we got this crossbar in here so this is going to be different than uh the design that ripcord has because we're going to make a, a fold up platform that stretches the rest of the way so it'll be it'll lift up so that's what we're in the middle of fabricating right now with uh, some angle iron we'll see if it's strong enough um TBD on that for sure. But uh, yeah, and then this little uh, Harbor Freight miter saw has been doing all my metal cutting. I just have a, uh, I just have a DeWalt um, abrasive blade on it and that's getting the job done. So we're gonna go ahead and cut up some one inch pipe right now. And that's gonna serve as the support. Um, I'm gonna do it a little bit shorter than Ripcord has because I want most of this space open. And this frame's pretty sturdy as it is, so this will just provide a little bit more rigidity to uh, the structure. Massive update. We got uh, everything welded on the whole frame. We got the weld nuts in, all of the supports. 
So I modified my plans a little bit compared to what Ripcord had. Um, you definitely don't need like a big long support piece there. Uh, this will do, and plus it gives me now big open access on the side, which is gonna be awesome. Be able to you know fit some bigger things through that opening. But yeah, we got everything all welded, all seams. And uh, this is also a little bit different. So this is where uh, the pivot point for the sleeping platform will be. So that's kind of the next thing we got to do is uh, take this, um, some of this angle iron over here and fabricate the platform that's going to go in here. That's going to lift and uh, that's kind of the next step. So a lot of progress. Um, I'm hoping to finish the sleeping platform within the next few days, get all the holes drilled, get all the welds that need to be ground, ground down. And uh, we're going to try and get this thing painted this weekend. It's Monday now. But yeah, I feel like I made a lot of progress. I started this project on, I think, the 10th of October. So it's been 18 days as of now. Um, I feel like it's going pretty quickly. But uh, I know that the sewing portion is going to be really difficult, and I have to teach myself that. Just as I've had, to, just as I've had to teach myself um, the welding as well. But uh, I'm optimistic, and uh, I think things will go pretty quickly. I'm eager to get the garage back. As you can see, it's just a catastrophe right now. There's stuff everywhere. Uh, definitely a working zone. Lots of tools out. Uh, I'm eager to get things cleaned up and kind of back to the way they were. Extrusion sh extrusions should be here, um, I think, this week. And uh, I have a local shop that's going to be cutting out the side doors um, for me, hopefully, this week as well, out of some either Max Metal or Alu Panel. I'm going to have to modify um, the, the back and front uh, panels because the interior... Uh, width on the first gen Tacomas is different than the second gen, so I'll have to make some modifications to those in Fusion 360. And then we can get those cut, and that will be uh, after the floor. I mean, the only other thing to do really is paint and uh, sew up the tent material. I still, need to, I still need to purchase the tent material, so I should probably get to doing that soon before uh, anything runs out or some colors that I want aren't available. But uh, yeah, a lot of progress. I'm gonna call it for the night. Uh, I've been working on it for about two and a half hours. It's time to go take a shower and eat. Also, this titanium 125 welder has been a workhorse for $179. Honestly, I can't complain. And it's put out some pretty decent looking welds. I mean, yeah, these aren't ground down yet, but um, or at least polished up, but I can't really complain about any of those and uh, they're going to do the job just fine. So pretty pumped on that thing. big update it's been a while since i've updated you guys got a lot accomplished uh just kind of really uh put my head down and uh, got things all wrapped up all of the welding is done i think i'm gonna check make sure i got all the the seams and everything all welded all the grinding is done uh what we're gonna try and accomplish this weekend is getting it all painted we're just gonna go with a simple glossy black keep it clean 
and uh, nothing too crazy on it. Um, I have got the 8020 is over here in those boxes. I'm going to be unboxing that here tonight and uh, starting of uh, assembling some of those portions. The panels are going to be cut on Monday. Um, that took a little bit longer. I had to redesign um, basically all the panels except for the side ones to uh, fit the first gen because the frame's a little bit different. I got um, the floor panels designed for the tilting bed and really curious to see how those turn out and <laughs> how my designs and measurements turned out. Hopefully they work good there. Uh, more stuff on the way, um, fabrics on the way. That's kind of the last piece to really wrap up is the tent portion and to start sewing that. So I got to find myself a sewing machine. But yeah, let's uh, let's take a look and see where we're at on the tent. So here it is in all its glory. We got the uh, lifting um, floor platform all sorted out. These uh, hinges here. We're just gonna end up sticking some uh, eighth inch rubber on uh, these spots where it sits. It's a little not super flush, but that's okay. It'll uh, It'll be fine. And then we're gonna go with something really simple for holding up um, the tent in the, or holding up this platform in the tent. I think I'm gonna put a little fabric loop around here. And then what we'll do is hang a strap from the ceiling of the tent to just hold this up. Um, that's the plan anyways. If not, then we'll sort something else out simple. I'm not gonna do any fancy gas struts or anything like that. Um, I don't wanna just overcomplicate it. But uh, yeah, she is all done. I also found a buyer for the jig, which is awesome. Uh, they have a first gen as well. They're coming to pick it up tomorrow. So that will, uh, I'll recoup a little bit of costs on it. I just sold it for the cost of materials, which I think if you're building one of these for a first gen Tacoma, uh, this is gonna save you a lot of time on uh, startup and such. So that'll be cool to get rid of that. And then the tent is uh, going this weekend as well as uh, the canopy. So we're committing fully and uh, things are moving along quickly. It's 80-20 time. We've got the extrusion up on uh, the frame there. So we're just kind of getting the 80-20 together and uh, getting the corners and everything all mounted up so we can uh, just assemble it. And then we'll move everything just kind of over onto the frame for now. The jig is pretty handy for just helping um, assemble the tent portion, uh, the wedge portion of um, the tent. So super handy. I'm trying to get this done tonight. It's pretty late right now, but uh, this jig will be gone tomorrow. So trying to get this assembled and uh, we'll move the top portion off onto the tent here and say goodbye to the jig. And then we'll probably pull this back off the top so we can drill our holes for uh, mounting the wedge to the space frame, and then we'll get that space frame painted. Didn't end up getting it painted tonight, but that's the plan for tomorrow, is uh, start getting that thing primed. Okay, we're gonna be gearing up now and start getting things uh, prepped for painting. We're gonna go ahead and take a scuff pad and scuff um, the frame up, make sure it's nice and rough, and then we're gonna go ahead and um, wipe it down with some xylene and uh, get it all prepped for uh, some primer. You'll want to use self-etching primer on this, so that's what we're gonna do. We've got four cans of that. We'll see if that's enough. paint booth set up we got these little uh, guys down here so we can at least get the bottom we'll have to um, flip it over once the top dries to spray the bottom and get anywhere else that we missed and then got that hanging from that little rack there got some light in here it's looking pretty good so we're gonna go ahead and clean it up and uh, spray some primer on it so finally painted got the tilting platform back on we just went with the gloss black uh, Rust-Oleum enamel. It looks pretty good. We'll see how durable it is. Um, I didn't bother clearing it because I would like to be able to just touch it up more easily if I get any like chips or anything like that in the future. 
Um, you know, it's not going to be too big a deal if, say, I want to pull the tent off sometime and just have the frame powder coated. So that's the route we went. We're just putting uh, in these little um, 10 millimeter balls for the gas struts that will mount here. And I'm also putting in silicone right there on anything that's going into the frame. So keep everything all sealed up. Doors, side panels, should apparently be cut tomorrow, hopefully. Um, tomorrow will be Wednesday. They did say last Friday or Monday, hoping they get done. Um, the extrusion frame sitting here. It's just kind of waiting. I just had my extra screws show up so I can start putting that together. But yeah, it's, uh, it's coming together. Small update. We got the end caps into the metal. So those fit in there really nice. And they're just these, these little plastic caps. And uh, usually they would sit kind of flush um, with the edge. But what I did is sanded down all four sides so that way they fit right inside. And we just put a bunch of silicone all around these and in the back and everything so they should be pretty watertight. Okay, we just picked up uh, our E-panel, so the roofing material and the uh, side panel like door material and it's in the back, you might be able to see it there. Super exciting, this is kind of the last piece I was waiting on to finish up the space frame and all of that. Um, I'm gonna be using this to drill some holes in the frame that are still left to be drilled. And uh, we're gonna start getting this all together. This is kind of, yeah, just the last piece before we can wrap it up, so super stoked on that. We're gonna finish out the work day today and then maybe get started um, on it this evening. I've been waiting for my wrist to heal. I definitely have an overuse injury from scuffing the frame and all of that stuff and uh, trying to go dirt biking tomorrow and hopefully it feels a little bit better. So we'll see on that. I'll keep you guys posted, but super exciting. Okay, so now we're putting on the panel. We're gonna just get this all lined up and then use it to start drilling holes through the frame. I don't know what I was doing, but I totally messed up here. This edge and these bolt holes should be on this piece of metal here. Um, so what I went and did is got a big eighth inch thick, two inch by two inch um, angle iron piece. And that'll give me enough meat right here to uh, hold that piece down. So I'll just use some self tapping screws through this in the aluminum and We'll call it good. You can see it's all mounted up underneath there. Um, so we have about, uh, I would say half inch or so of mounting uh, material. So should be pretty, pretty sturdy. And then we'll have to just kind of mark this post across here to drill these holes. Um, I took those out because I wasn't exactly sure where they'd fit, but uh, yeah. And then this piece, the bed piece, I didn't have any holes pre-cut in this one. Um, and it's purposely just a little bit bigger. So we'll just cut that down to size with the jigsaw or we'll take a, um, a box cutting knife and uh, score the edge where we need to score it and snap the, the excess off. But yeah, and then doors and stuff are just chilling over there. So that's what we're gonna do is just to get all these holes drilled with the smaller smaller pilot hole. And then we'll take, a, I think, I believe a five eighths. Uh, we'll take the, Take this off and then we'll drill the holes in five eighths. So we got all the holes drilled through the frame and uh, the build thread says it's easier to mount the space frame to the frame if you uh, flip the space frame on the ground and, and uh, mount it kind of upside down. Um, so, you know, lay the top portion down on the ground and construct it upside down, but we're gonna go ahead and attempt to do it right side up. So what I'm going to do is we're going to put, uh, we're going to put some of this, um, butyl tape along the ceiling edge of the, um, extrusion. So that'll seal up this portion right here. And then I'm going to have the wife help me lay it onto the frame. And then we're going to start bolting the extrusion to the frame. Change of plans, we are gonna build it upside down. So I'm gonna go ahead and put the rest of these pieces in 
and then we'll put that butyl tape along the seam here then we'll stick this piece on uh, on that and get it uh, get it on there and then we'll flip the frame over on top of it all right another update we got all of the bolts and washers in so we ended up ripping up all of the rv putty tape stuff it was just too thick and bulky and wasn't um pressing out well enough and uh, we ran a bead of silicone down um through here so you can kind of see some of it there should make a nice clean seam um nice clean seal there i'll say getting these bolts through um into basically through two holes here in the um in the tubing and then through one hole here into the uh little threaded nut insert in the extrusion was a nightmare <laughs> it's probably the hardest part of this whole build yet I'm trying to line up uh those five different things, but it's done. We're gonna about to flip this thing over now and uh, get it sitting upright over in this area. Um, gonna try and decide which orientation we want it in, but yeah, we'll get it all uh, flipped over and continue working on it. All right, so we're mounting the bulkhead. Originally, I was thinking I was going to put this on the other side of the bars, but it would be a real pain to try and get this to fit and notch it around this and just having to cut the corners. So we're going to go ahead and put it on the front. The reason I was thinking about putting it behind is to give the rear window on the first gen some more room. But it's okay, we'll just have to pull the camper back just a bit um, and kind of just see how much we can get away with in terms of how close um, this can be to the window. But we're just measuring things out now and uh, drilling evenly spaced holes into the bulkhead and the frame, just using some tape here, um, going about 5 eighths of an inch in from the wall of the pipe um, on all sides here. We're not using the bulkhead to make those measurements because it's ever so slightly off. Um, so I want the rivet holes it drilled into the frame to be just 5 eighths inward, um, regardless of the shape of the bulkhead. So yeah, that's what we're doing. And hopefully we'll get this riveted on here soon. And then I think we'll be able to flip this thing over. It's been a little bit since I dropped you guys an update. I honestly can't remember when it was that I last updated you, but uh, we're getting the roof positioned and lining up all the slot nuts in the holes, and then we'll pull the roof off. And I'm gonna silicone um, the top, the seal with some of this stuff. And uh, that's what we're gonna use to seal the roof onto the, the extrusion. Uh, but yeah, so then the roof will be on been finishing up little details like the corners and stuff like that, uh, getting the cork and rubber gaskets kind of cut so that way those corners are sealed. But we're getting close, very close to the end of the space frame and uh, I guess structural uh, portion of the build and we'll be moving on to the sewing, which I am looking forward to but not looking forward to because I know it's going to be very difficult but it'll be a nice change of pace from working on this. So we're gonna go ahead and continue onward and uh, finish lining up those slot nuts and then see if we can't get uh, this roof all bolted in and uh, sealed tonight. So today's task, ignore the insane mess in here. Uh, it's just kind of easier to just keep going, but uh, we're gonna get the stiffeners <clears throat> on the door panel. So we're gonna take this aluminum angle and basically um, cut it to fit uh, around these rivet holes that are on the outside of the door panel. And uh, that will add some stiff stiffness to these doors because this, I mean, the, while this stuff is sturdy, it's pretty flimsy. Um, so that'll add the stiffening to the doors. So yeah, we're gonna go ahead and just start kind of marking and cutting and bending this to fit around and uh, start riveting it to the doors. Okay, massive update. It's been a little bit since I last updated you guys. Um, we got both the side doors on and gas struts are on. So those open, um, 
everything's bolted up there. We got, uh, got the latches on as well. So those are super nice latches. Um, little bit of issues with fitment um, and the size of these doors. Uh, they're based off of second and third gen dimensions. I didn't think they would uh, be all that much different. So went ahead and had them cut as is anyways, but I think they're just a smidge too big. They gave me some some issues getting them mounted up with uh, clearances and stuff. And you can see they kind of contact the frame back here, but uh, I have a solve for that. So no biggie there. We got to do some other trimming and uh, grinding to kind of finish those up. But yeah, that's on. Doors are on, the bed panels bolted up, and uh, you can see this just lifts up here. Um, and then we'll just have like a strap or something to basically just hold this piece up. When we want it up, that provides a gigantic space um, for standing and hanging out or whatever. The weather's bad, changing, things like that. So that is awesome, stoked on that. But uh, the garage is an absolute disaster. So we're gonna clean it up before we move on to the next part. got the garage all cleaned up uh, for the most part it was a bit of a pigsty for sure and I guess that's kind of just what happens when you're trying to work with as much time as uh, you have and uh, not waste a bunch of time I guess cleaning things up as you go and putting things away it was just faster for me to kind of leave things strewn about so I could just grab them really quickly uh, instead of putting them away in between using them. But yeah, now we're gonna start on the next part and that's putting weather stripping on the lower doors. Um, I still need to put the rear door on, but I need two more stainless hinges. I bought all the ones that Home Depot had when I went there. <clears throat> um, so yeah, weather sealing on the side doors that are on there now, and that will basically finish up those doors. There's little, some little adjustments I'll need to do um, to how it closes and stuff, but really minor stuff. Um, and then once the back door is on, that's really it for the structural build of uh, this camper. And then it'll be on to sewing. I got the sewing machine set up today and ran some test stitches through it. Never sewed a day in my life, so this will be interesting. But my first impression is it shouldn't be too hard, um, hopefully. So yeah, we'll find out, but we're gonna get to it, get some weather stripping or weather sealing on these doors. All right, update. We are now working on the fabric portion. This is like a basically a 20 foot section. So we're measuring out uh, the dimensions of the piece we're gonna cut out of this right now and marking it. And uh, yeah, we're gonna basically get everything all drawn in so we can start cutting this up and then get it under the sewing machine here, which is a uh, work in progress. Uh, I've done some practice, uh, some practice stitches with it and stuff, just getting the hang of it. So should be a good time, but yeah, lots of, lots of marking and measuring to do. Okay. We got it cut out and measured. It is close enough. It's difficult measuring a piece of fabric this big and getting things as accurate as possible, but now we're going to go ahead and probably hem the edges for the key to rail and the, the awning cord. And uh, we might try and stick it in the tent or yeah, stick it on the tent before we cut window holes just to make sure this portion fits. So that's what we're going to do. So you have to ignore the mess in here. I've now commandeered uh, the living room and part of the dining room while the wife is at her parents' house. Got 
the windows all cut out of the fabric. Everything's looking pretty good. Um, I'm happy with the shape of everything and how it all turned out. Um, I think it's going to look pretty good. So getting these radiuses on these windows was difficult to sort out. It took me a while to figure out how I wanted to kind of accomplish it. And so this corner is the same radius as this corner over here. So what I ended up doing was basically just making this cardboard template here um, to help me draw the, the lines. And I just marked the start and stop points along um, this line that frames out the window. So that sped things up a lot. Um, I didn't use a template here. I just used a string and, uh, or that string right there, and a pencil um, and measured in the same amount of inches from uh, the top and side. So yeah, that's uh, it's good to be done with that portion. Now we're going to put this away. It's uh, Thanksgiving week, and uh, we're gonna have to pick it back up here in a few days. But the next thing will be hemming the edges and starting the uh, the sewing process. Wish me luck. All right, time for the first first stitches. Shoot. We're on at super slow <laughs> speed. Mm. You know. taking a break from some sewing. Uh, I want to try and get the tent into the topper before I waste a bunch of time on zippers and other pieces just to make sure how it's hemmed and cut fits. So right now we're just marking out our drill holes on uh, this uh, basically Keter, Keter or Keter rail. Uh, so that's going to go on the inside edge and it will mount up basically to um, the extrusion like so and it's got a little track in it. That's what's going to hold on the tent um, If any of you have had a rooftop tent chances are you've seen this very same uh, Type of fastening used to hold the tents on to your rooftop tents. So that's what we're gonna do We're gonna start drilling through holes. We got a giant bundle of uh, these pieces to drill through so Gonna use this one as a template and then proceed to drill all my holes through those ones. We're tackling the zippers now. And this is the portion that uh, I was dreading the most because it's gonna be interesting to get those on. Hi, buddy. What are you doing? Weirdo. Are you weird? Are you weirdo? All right, quick update. It's going a lot better than I thought, at least for this portion of the zipper. We'll see once we attach the other side of the zipper to the door portion and trying to stitch that on how easy that's gonna be. I think that's gonna be the hardest part just because of all the material there is to handle, but we're gonna find out really quick. Okay, update time. So we got the zippers all sewn on, on all of the doors, the, the main zipper that is. Now what we're doing is measuring out uh, this bug netting to fit um, the openings of all the windows. I keep calling them doors, but in reality, they're windows. So yeah, I got that um, done. I already hemmed the largest uh, portion of bug netting. So now we're working on the side windows. The next step is to sew on another set of zippers for um, the bug netting of the windows. So they'll have their own zippers as well. And then getting pretty close to being done. We'll have to put on the main kind of awning door um, for the back there, and then some rain skirts um, across the bottom side uh, to keep the rain out of the extrusion and out of the inside, and then uh, some vents in the corner. So, progress. This is definitely the hardest part of this whole build. Okay, so big update. Haven't really updated you guys in a while. I've been plowing away on working on this thing, and I haven't had much time to even think about anything other than the camper. So 
we're getting the uh, bed seals prepped right now. Um, there's a very good chance that this is gonna go on the truck this weekend, fingers crossed. I have the smallest amount of sewing to sew up, to sew up, <laughs> to finish up, and then it's gonna go on, and then all I gotta do is find some help to help me get this thing on the truck, and that's kinda gonna be a wrap, and then it'll be, um, we'll do some seam sealing on the stitches and everything, make sure that it's all watertight after the sewing, uh, and then it's really finding a time to get out and do a shakedown and uh, camp in it. So I'll update you guys once we get uh, the fabric on the tent. And uh, yeah, then we'll go from there, but super exciting. I cannot wait to be done with this. We're approaching, I think we're on the 10th week right now. So it's been a journey for sure. Um, super stoked that it'll be almost done. All right, it's the final stitch. <laughs> And then we can put the tent on the camper. So now we're just gonna put in this Keter rail. This is like awning cord. It's gonna go in uh, these little channels here and that mounts to the Keter rail uh, pieces on the tent and that's what holds it in. So getting close to being done. Hi puppy. So what we're doing now is we're sliding on the Keter rail onto Keter, Keter, I don't know how to say that. Uh, sliding it onto that awning cord that we just strung through. And that's gonna help mount it to the inside here of uh, the extrusion. And uh, yeah, so we're gonna get trucking. All right, it's all done. Tents on there, everything works. Uh, I've got the mattress inside as well. Probably won't be able to see it, but. Everything is on. Yeah, can I help instead of film now? Yes. <laughs>